Wheeler and Wilson introduced the Model 12 industrial machine in about 1888. And this, they made a variety of these styles of the 12. And in 1905, Singer bought out Wheeler and Wilson and they continued to make some of their models, the 12 in particular too. Uh, and they called it the 12W with different model names. Mine's a 12W102. It's still a Wheeler and Wilson, and it has one of the later decals on it. So it probably was shortly before Singer bought them out. So it's young. It's a little older than 1905, but I'm not sure of the date because I'm missing my slide plate, which has the serial number on it. So I haven't been able to date this. A really nice machine. It has a knee lift. I like that. I'd love to find an original slide plate that I'm missing, plus the industrial size spool holder. I have a domestic size on here that I'm using, but I'd like the bigger industrial. Now this table is what I bought this machine in, and I'm really sure that it's not an original Wheeler and Wilson table that would have come with this machine. It's a little wooden plate here, might be original Wheeler, but uh, someone redid this top, I'm sure. Um, but I do like that that left side extension, and they put a tape, put a drawer over on the table under that extension. It might be the original drawer. Then they also added three drawers on the right side that are definitely not Wheeler and Wilson or something else, but they just wanted some more drawers. The uh, base of it is the industrial version of the Wheeler and Wilson machines, and it has a knee lift, has a wider area down underneath, plus the larger pedal. So that's an original uh, industrial treadle base. The needle sizes that this takes are the 128 by 1s. And I have some that are original Singer industrial needles, but you can get these new online too or through some sewing centers. Uh, this is an original bobbin that came with the machine. It holds quite a bit of thread. They say in the ads that it'll hold 100 yards of number 70 weight. But luckily this bobbin case will also take a size 15, Singer 15 bobbin. Um, and these, the other ones that go in like a Singer 66, 99, 201, so it kind of takes some standard bobbins and it'll work just fine. This is the Wheeler and Wilson attachment box. Now this one did not come with this machine. This is, came with my domestic size model, which is the D9 that I have. And really nice quality little box. I love these pretty boxes. It did such a beautiful job with them back then. But luckily, I can actually use these attachments on this machine, even though this is an industrial. So they're interchangeable, which is nice. I have a fairly good sized group of attachments. I am missing a few. What I do have is uh, I have the narrow hammer foot. I have the bias binder. I have what I assume is the braiding foot or cording foot, the tuck marker or the tucker, the ruffler, an extra needle cover plate, and the wide hammer, the adjustable wider hammer foot. And they have a different way of attaching to the machine than just about any others out there. So Loading the bobbin in the bobbin case, you want to have your thread over the top and to the right, so clockwise, pull it up into that little slit on the side, very typical bobbin loading type deal for a bobbin case. And there's a little hook at the point of this uh, tension spring on here. Got to be sure to get it between that, that hook and the main body of the tension spring. And then pull it to make sure you've got the tension you want on it. To load this into the machine, pretty different than a lot of machines out there, 
There's a, a long arm, long forked arm that you pull down, you push on a button and that loosens it. And you pull this forked arm down. And that bobbin case, you want that finger pointing up. Put it in there on the pin. And then it's important to line up that fork with that finger because that's the only thing that holds this bobbin in is that fork arm. And that snaps in. And that's all that holds it. And you can put your cover plate back on. And they do have the cover plate does have a slit that you can put the length of bobbin thread on. Through, bring it up top. So you can uh, get it later with the needle. Then to thread this machine, you basically pull a thread from the spool and there's a little hook eye up top. It's a wire hook eye. You start in there and you hook it under that. Right here. Get up under there. And then there's a little uh, a little guide that has a little bit of a tension spring to it. Slip that over the top of that and through it. Make sure it's down in that little disc there. And then you put it through the main tensioner. And you want to make sure those tensioner discs are open. And this has a, another little level that you snap it up all the way to the top. And that opens those tension discs. Bring it down to the, uh, the uh, take up leather lever spring. Make sure it snaps up inside that little spring holder. And then you thread it through the, the take up arm from back to front. And then there's another little wire hook guide down there in front and then down to the needle bar guide. And this particular machine will thread from left to right. So here I'm threading left to right. And you bring up the bobbin thread the same way you do on most machines. And you're ready to sew. Wheeler and Wilson's are touted as having a really good stitch, which they do. It's a very smooth running machine and easy to treadle, easy to run, and just a really, really nice even stitch. have reverse. This machine does. It's, it's part of the stitch regulator knob. You just pull it all the way to the top to do the reverse. It also has a really long stitch that you, is nice for using for basting. It's probably more than a quarter of an inch long. It's a very big, big um, stitch you can do as your maximum stitch length. Probably about a quarter inch, maybe even a little bigger than that. Quiet running machine, but it's a very good solo. And to take it out, you want to make sure you lift that, that release arm all the way up and open those discs. And then it comes out very, very easily. This is the stitch length regulator here, and all the way down is that big stitch, and all the way up is the reverse. So about in the middle there's your typical stitch length. 
and the bobbin winders right there. You just put it on your treadle belt and wind your bobbin. And it's something a little extra here that I recently learned that probably a lot of you professionals already know is a way of testing your, your thread tension, your upper and lower thread tension by sewing on the bias of a piece of fabric a nice long line across the bias where you're going to have some stretch. And what you do is you take it off you give it a, a good pull on that stretchy bias and you look for it to snap like that. And you look to see that that top thread has broken. You know, just on the opposite side, the bottom thread has also broken. And that means you're adjusted just perfectly for your tension top and bottom. If one of those is not broken, then you need to readjust things until you get both of them to break at the same time like that. I thought that was pretty neat. Something I didn't know. So that's my Wheeler & Wilson long arm tailoring and leather machine, industrial. It's a treadle. And I looked for these online. I didn't see any examples of them. So it might be kind of rare. I thought you might enjoy getting a chance to see one. <laughs>